Collinearity, Betweenness, and Assumptions, Level 1 In the following series of videos, we will go over the concepts of collinearity, betweenness of points, triangle inequality, and assumptions from diagrams. Let's start with the concept of collinearity. It is often useful to know that a group of points lie in the same line. Points that lie on the same line are called collinear. The word co is Latin for together, and lineares, which means belonging to a line. Points that do not lie on the same line are called non collinear. In the diagram shown, points A, B, and C are collinear points, since they all lie in the same line. Points D, E, and F are non collinear points since they do not lie in the same line. We want to be able to identify collinear and non-collinear points when we are solving problems in geometry. In the following diagram, points R, S, and T are collinear points. Points P, O, and X are also collinear. Notice that points M, O, X, and Y are non-collinear. Alright, Let's move along and talk about betweenness of points. In order for us to say that a point is between two other points, all three of the points must be collinear. For example, in the following diagram, point T is between point A and point R, since all three points are collinear. On the other hand, we cannot say that point O is between point X and point Y since all three points are not in the same line. Notice that three points that are not collinear form the vertices of a triangle. For any three points, there are only two possibilities. The first possibility is that all three points are collinear. That is to say that one point is between the other two points. When three points are collinear, we can break apart this line into three distinct line segments each with their own length or measurement. Two of the lengths add up to the third length. For example, the following points are collinear and point B is between point A and point C. If the length of line segment AB is 10 and the length of line segment BC is 15, then the length of line segment AC will be equal to the sum of the length of line segment AB and the length of line segment BC. In this case, it will be equal to 25. The second possibility is that all three points are non-collinear. In other words, the three points determine a triangle. If we keep the length of line segment AC intact and move point B so that it is not between point A and point C, we would form a triangle. Something interesting happens with the lengths of the triangle. With the points arranged this way, the length of line segment AB measures 10, and the length of line segment BC measures 16. If we were to add the length of line segment AB and the length of line segment BC, we would obtain a length that is greater than the length of line segment AC. When the lines were collinear, the sum of the lengths of the two smaller line segments was equal to the length of the larger line segment that included all three points. This is not the case with non-collinear points. In this case, the sum of the lengths of two sides of the triangle is greater than the length of the third side. This makes sense since the shortest distance between two points in a plane is a straight line. The total distance covered going from point A to point C will always be longer if you have to detour via point B, as opposed to going in a straight line directly from point A to point C. This is an example of an important characteristic of triangles. In this case, the sum of the lengths of any two sides of a triangle is always greater than the length of the third side. Said another way, any side of a triangle is always shorter than the sum of the other two sides. This fact generates three separate inequalities. In the first inequality, the sum of the length of segment AB plus the length of segment BC is greater than the length of segment AC. In the second inequality, 
the sum of the length of segment AB plus the length of segment AC is greater than the length of segment BC. And in the third inequality, the sum of the length of segment BC and the length of segment AC is greater than the length of segment AB. These three inequalities must always be obeyed for any triangle in a plane. Alright, let's end the video by going over assumptions from diagrams. It is important to understand what you should and should not assume when you look at a diagram. In general, one interprets a diagram by assuming the following. Straight lines and straight angles, collinearity of points, betweenness of points, and relative positions of points. You should not assume the following. Right angles. This is one of the most common mistakes that many students make. Never ever assume that an angle is a right angle. Just because it looks like a right angle does not mean that it is a right angle. The second most common mistake is to assume congruent line segments and congruent angles. Again, just because two line segments or two angles look congruent does not mean that they are congruent. Lastly, you should never assume the relative sizes of segments and angles. Just because a segment or angle looks like it is twice as large as another segment or angle does not mean that they are twice as large. One of the reasons why students make these incorrect assumptions is because of wishful thinking. If these assumptions are made, it will make the problem easier to solve. So when you're interpreting diagrams, try to fight the urge to make an assumption just because the problem will be easier to solve if those assumptions were true. There are occasional exceptions and most textbooks and test questions will have a note indicating that the diagram is not drawn to scale. If this is the case, be extremely careful with making incorrect assumptions. One has to prove that these assumptions are true and we will go over how to do this in a much later video. Let's go over an example to illustrate the appropriate way to interpret a diagram. The following are some of the many valid interpretations. One can assume from the diagram that line ACD and line BCE are straight lines. Angle BCE and angle ACD are straight angles. Points C, D, and E and points C, A, and B are non-collinear. Point C is between point B and point E. Point E is to the right of point A, and point B is to the left of point D. Now, you should not assume that angle BAC or angle CDE are right angles, nor should you assume that segment CD is congruent to segment DE or that segment AC is congruent to segment AB. You also cannot assume that angle B is congruent to angle E. You should not assume that angle CDE is an obtuse angle. You should not assume that segment BC is longer than segment CE. Alright, make sure you understand how to interpret a diagram because it will be extremely important that you know what to and what not to assume from a given diagram. In our next video, we will go over various examples that make use of these new concepts.